Hi, this is John Butler, uh, Vice President and Head of Wealth Services at Gold Money. I'm here at the Money 2020 conference in Copenhagen. This is day two. Uh, we're receiving a lot of interest around gold, which is great. But of course, a lot of people are skeptical. A lot of people aren't sure exactly how to value gold. And a lot of people have been reading uh, this article uh, that appeared in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's dated uh, 3rd April, and it's written by their columnist, uh, Stephen Russolillo. And basically, he's warning the gold bugs, uh, as he says here, the rally won't last. Gold will not keep going up in price, even though it had a really good run over the past few months. And he gives several reasons for this. First of all, is a simple market momentum technical reason. He's saying, when anything goes up over 20% in a few months' time, it tends to give some of that back. Okay, fine. That's not really an attack on gold at all. That could be an attack on anything. But then he gets into it and he says the real problem with gold is that it has no intrinsic value. And he juxtaposes that with stocks and bonds and other assets that generate an income having an intrinsic value. But that really misconstrues what intrinsic value is because the concept of intrinsic value is something having a value in of itself that doesn't require it to provide an income. Stocks are risky, therefore they must pay you a dividend, otherwise you would never buy them. Bonds are also potentially risky, therefore they have to pay you a return. Gold can't default, it can't be arbitrarily devalued, and it's held its value for 5,000 years. It doesn't need to pay an income, it has intrinsic value. Almost everyone on the planet would have some use for gold, as jewelry or whatever, for use in art, who knows what it is. And this cuts across cultures, it cuts across time, it cuts across space, all human experience. So he misconstrues, misunderstands, and maybe he's just ignorant of what intrinsic value really means. And as you scroll down here, he also suggests that when you look at gold, hey, there are times when it goes up, there are times when it goes down, and it generally only goes up in a risk-averse environment. Well, sometimes gold goes up in a risk-averse environment, as it did uh, going into the final phases of the housing bubble in the U.S., as it did during the serial crises that rolled through the euro area in 2009, 10, 11, 12. That's true, but gold also simply goes up when prices go up, when inflation goes up. It doesn't have to be a risk aversion story. And indeed, there are times when the gold rises in line with the stock market, but there are times when the stock market crashes and gold still manages to rise. So he's really not done his research, he's really not looked at history, and he's even got the theory of gold wrong. And yet the fact that this sort of article appears in the Wall Street Journal, a, you know, a supposedly grown up, sophisticated financial publication, it tells you something about the entire mainstream financial narrative around gold. In many cases, it is simply misinformed. They don't understand gold, they don't get it, and they probably also therefore can't understand why BitGold, uh, our retail arm, has signed up over 800,000 clients to the gold platform in just over a year's time. They don't understand that either, but we think our clients are a very good judge of the fact that interest in gold is as strong or even stronger perhaps uh, than it's been in modern times. Anyway, thanks for listening.